Hi everyone, this is Miss McQuite from Oak Ridge Elementary. Today we're going to be creating a tessellation. What is a tessellation? A tessellation is a series of shapes that fit together perfectly. No gaps and no overlaps. You can think of it like a puzzle piece where each piece is identical. We're going to be using the app Sketches School. Um, so open up your app. You can get it in self-service if you don't have it. Create a new page using no grain and a white background. Click on the letters tool, which is also going to give you shapes, and choose a square. Tap on it and it will put it on your screen. You can pinch from the middle out to make it bigger. Don't make it too big. Then you're going to be using the knife tool. It's the second to last one on the side. You can see it's highlighted red here on mine. It can be any kind of line that you want it to be but make sure it starts and ends on that side. Don't cross over the corner. Pull that piece down to the bottom and just get it out of the way. Now repeat the same thing starting on the left side of the square. Again, it could be any kind of line that starts and ends on that side. So I'm gonna put that piece over to the right and just leave it there for now. Then I'm gonna be using the ruler tool. It's right underneath the knife. And when you click on it, it will pull it up on your screen. It may be vertical or it may be horizontal, but you can change that. I'm going to line it up to the very top edge, right where I started cutting. I'm going to mark that right here just so you can see it. Once I've marked where you can see mine, you don't have to mark yours. I'm going to use the knife tool to go select my bottom piece that I cut out. It gives you little marching ants to let you know it's selected. And now I can move it right into place. I'm going to line it up with the ruler on the left side. You have to make sure that you don't have any gaps or overlaps. It might take you a couple of tries to do this. Once you've got it perfectly in place, let go and click off on your background. That will deselect that piece. And then you can turn your ruler using your two fingers to physically turn the ruler on the, the screen. You want it to be at 0% for a horizontal. I'm going to mark that here. Again, you don't have to mark it. I just did so you can see what I was doing. I'm going to go select my other piece carefully. And again, I'm going to line it up to the very bottom left where the ruler is touching the square. When I've got it in place, I'm going to let go. I'm going to erase my marks so that you don't see them anymore. And now I'm going to use the knife tool again to select the whole thing. Make sure you don't cut off any pieces. Now I can shrink it down a little bit and move it out of the way. Once I've got it the size I want, make sure you use the knife tool to select. And now I can go up to the triple dots at the top, press the square with the arrow pointing down, and press paste. That will give me another copy. You can see it's going to fit together just like a puzzle. But what I'm going to do is line it up with the very corner edge of the first one. I'm going to repeat this over and over until I filled my page. You can see it will create the negative space, that inside space between the shapes, and create your pattern. For the ones on the edge, drag it all the way to where you need it to be, and it will just hang off of the edge of your canvas. You might have to try this a couple of times. Sometimes the program will start cutting again, and once it does that, then your shape is no longer selected and you can't paste it. Check to see if you missed any spots, and then you're done. Here's what mine looks like. You can see that that pattern repeats over and over and over. Now I've done this in two colors, but another option you have is to create many colors. So you're going to do the same process to make your piece, but then once you've pasted it, you can use this little tool on 
the left side of the screen, it looks like a little paint roller. And when you've done that, it's going to select that piece when you tap on it, and you can change the color in the bottom right corner. You can do this after they've been put onto the canvas, but I like to do it as soon as I put that piece down, just in case the program decides it has that piece no longer selected. If you click on the background, it's going to change the entire background color. I like to leave it just white, just so that nothing goes wrong. You could do many different colors. You could pick a pattern of colors, but this way you actually have to put them together like puzzle pieces. Don't leave any spaces. Continue to fill your space with as many as will fit. You don't want any white spaces showing. Repeat until your entire page is filled. If you want to change the color of one of your pieces, click on the paint roller, choose the color that you want, and then click on the piece. That will still change the color even if you've already selected one before. Here's what mine looks like with all the different colors. So that gives you two options to try, and I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.